Science is in the smallest of subatomic particles to distant stars and galaxies billions of light years away. It is everywhere. It's in everything. It's in everyone. The universe is science. It pushes human civilizations to incredible heights. It is the engine that drives economic growth and development. Therefore, scientific knowledge is power. The power to think, the power to analyze, the power to interpret, the power to innovate, the power to ask questions. It is the vaccination against fuzzy thinking and being conned and exploited. One of the great things about science is that it is an entire exercise in finding out what is true. You come up with a hypothesis, you test it, falsify it and try to prove yourself wrong through experimentation. You get a result, a rival of yours double checks it because he thinks you might be wrong. They perform an even better experiment than you did. Finds out that the results match. Voila! Eventually out of this arises a new emergent truth. Science does it million times better than anything else we have ever come up with as human beings. I will explain the scientific methodology in another video. Science is a truly human activity that is ingrained in our DNA, something that drives curiosity. You look at kids, kids are born scientists. What do scientists do? They look up and ask, what is that? I need to find it out. Let me poke it, let me turn it over, let me do experiments with it and find out what it is. This is exactly what kids do. Kids, what do they do? They pluck flowers, leaves, turn over rocks, they are exploring their environment through experimentation. But what do we do? We prevent that. We prevent the innate sense of curiosity from them even within our own residences. We spend a year teaching our kids to walk and talk and the rest of their lives we tell them to sit down and shut up. What kind of an upbringing is that? The goal here is not to make everyone a scientist. That's not the goal. What a boring world that would be. You want artists, you want musicians, you want novelists, accountants, economists, lawyers, you want everybody. What matters is whether they are scientifically literate and maintain their literacy throughout their lives, no matter what profession they end up doing. If you as an educated adult can say that, oh, this is what the scientists think, but I don't believe in them, I choose to believe in this even though this is what the scientific truth is. Everybody has their own truths. This is true for me. I choose to believe that the sun revolves around the earth and not the other way around. If these sentences even come out of your mouth, I'm like, oh my days. You have no option. You have to believe in it, whether or not you like it. The established emerging truths of science are true, whether or not you believe in it. No matter what political party you support, no matter what religion you belong to, no matter what country you were born in, what your philosophies and ideologies are. You can't look at science and maths uh, as separate subjects because it is fundamental to what it means to exist and to be alive. Scientific truths are not subjective but objective. Well, we live in a free society, you can say, think and believe whatever you want. Nobody's gonna stop you. But if you rise to power and have influence over legislation and that legislation references to what you think science is and it is actually not, then that is a recipe for the catastrophe of an informed democracy. A part of a recipe for disaster. So I look back to KG through 12th and I say that there is something missing there. Somewhere in between these classes we need to teach students what it is to analyze. There needs to be a course teaching what science is and how and why it works. The scientific methodology that would transcend the physics class, the chemistry class, the biology class. Somewhere in between all these classes we need to sneak in a class or a course perhaps every year on what it is to analyze, how to process facts, how to turn that into information, information into knowledge and that knowledge into wisdom because it is wisdom that you require and need to invoke when you are a leader. Somewhere in there we need to train people how to think, how to analyze, how to interpret, how to be skeptical of information, then how to recognize when sufficient data has been put forth to come to appropriate conclusions. My jaw drops open every time I see people having political discussions uh, or debates arguing about science. People who deny science, rejecting evolution, climate change, contraception, abortion, GMO, 
stem cell research, etc. The young earth creationists who think that the earth was created six to ten thousand years ago when all the evidence suggests that it is around 4.5 billion years old. They want to teach creationism in schools. They are rejecting mainstream science, diabolical and imbecile. Now evolution is the foundation of modern biology and climate change is almost as real as the earth itself. I will discuss these topics in future videos. The main part of scientific literacy is not facts. The main part is how you look at the world and how you analyze it through your lens. It's a curiosity and inquiry. If you are scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. There is not a lot of stuff that is mysterious to you, but there is a lot of stuff that you understand. And that understanding empowers you to first not be taken advantage of by people who understand it. And second, there are a lot of issues that confront societies with science as its foundation. We as a species are highly susceptible to misinformation and self-delusion. There is a level of gullibility uh, that makes people vulnerable to being taken advantage of. I see science literacy as a kind of vaccination against charlatans who try to exploit your ignorance. I'm not requiring that you calculate the force of gravity or that you understand the theory of relativity, but I'm just asking you to be curious and to ask questions. Let's say I've got some crystals and I tell you that these crystals will heal you or cure your diseases if you rub, rub it on your body. What is the first question that you'll ask me? Is it how much does it cost? Let me buy some of those. Or is it how does it work? Explain how it works. Where do you get them from? Can you cure my diseases right now? Have you tested it? How have you tested it? By the time you're done with your questions, the guy who wants to sell the crystals is in tears trying to find out some other guy to sell his crystals to. That, my friends, is the main part of what scientific literacy is about. It's the skepticism, the critical thinking, the curiosity to know about things you don't know and the inquiry that you do. It is the analysis of information that comes your way and that's what's lacking in much of the world today. If you like this video, you will definitely like these two videos. This one is on why astrology is pseudoscience and this one on why homeopathy is pseudoscience. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Until next time, Arrivederci.